So today I want to talk to you about time traveling, but not the way you expected though, <laughs> not the way you expected. I follow this guy on social media, Instagram mainly. His name is William Rossi. He goes around on the streets of London and somewhere else I, I can't even remember. And he asks people a few questions like, how old are you? He always starts like that. How old are you? And then they'll say, oh, you know, I'm 30. And then he will say, how does it feel to be 30? Which is silly. And then they, they'll respond and then and he will ask some questions about life. But what I love about his channel is when he meets people who are 60, 70, 80 years old. He'll start the same way. You know, how old are you? I'm 82. Um, and then he will ask, how does it feel to be 82? Some people will go, oh, it's very heavy. Some people will go, I feel very young. But then he asks the key question, the main question. He says, if you could go back in time, what would you tell the 20 year old version of yourself? And man, that's a conversation because old people have some wisdom. So I'm fascinated by all these answers, but the most, the most common answer that they would provide to this question is like, I wish I knew this. It, it's always something around this expression. I wish I knew this. I wish I had done this. I wish I knew this. But always, I wish I knew this. If this is a metaphorical conversation, when given the chance, if you could ask anyone for, if they could have one wish, I can guarantee you that maybe eight out of 10 people would say, I wish I could go back in time. Maybe that's why the concept of time traveling is so fascinating to all of us human beings. And I, I, I don't want to go deep because I'm not qualified to do that. I could just go around talking about, you know, strings theory, bending the time, all of those quantum physics concepts, but I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to do that. But I do remember a movie that I watched and it was a beautiful movie. Funny enough, it's called Genie. You know, the genie in the bottle, Aladdin stuff, but it wasn't Aladdin, it was genie. It's on Netflix. I really recommend you watch it. There is this guy who's, who's a workaholic. He works too hard. And hey, how many of us can relate? Work too hard. And then the reality is he's missing out on the most important things in life. You know, his family is sort of losing touch. His daughter's growing up. He's not seeing his daughter growing up. Uh, he's, he's not present in the, the, the movie starts with this big scene, like telling this story and it is his daughter's birthday and he misses out on his daughter's birthday because he was working too hard, trying to get a promotion, trying to get to the next level, you know? <laughs> and he lost touch to the point where when he arrives home, his wife says, you know, I've had enough. You've missed out on so much. We barely recognize you. Time out. I'm going back to my mom's house, taking our daughter, until you figure out what you want for life. Man, that, that's a hectic scene on the comedy movie, I tell you that. And then he's like, she walks out, he sits down in this uh, couch, and he's an, he's an art collector, he's a, he's a curator in a sort of a museum, art gallery or something. And he sits down and then he looks on the shelf, he sees this weird thing. It, it's a bottle, like the, the bottle for the genie, the, you know, the whole thing. So he walks up to it and then she grabs it. Yeah, he grabs it, sits down again. And then he looks at it it's, it's funny because it doesn't really look like the bottle that we know. So, so he's trying to read the inscriptions in it. And then, you know, because it's a movie, he goes like. And then when he rubs it off like really hard, all of a sudden there's this boo smoke. like. And then the spoke comes up and then he's scared and then he's looking around and then he's like, what's happening? What's happening? Things are shaking, the shelf is shaking. And then it, it's like, it's very funny. But then this lady walks in. <laughs> it's, a, it's the main character. She's super funny though, forgot her name. She walks in and then he's scared. He's like, what? What, what, what are you doing here? And then he thinks that she's trying to steal something from the house because again, he's an art curator, a lot of expect. And then, she, you know, after a few, seconds, maybe minutes, she finally manages to explain to him that she's a genie, that she's been inside that bottle for thousands of years. And that has happened over and over and over again when people find the bottle, rubs it off, and then, you know, she comes out and then he's like, oh, okay, you're a genie. So does that mean that I have three wishes? 
And then she laughs, and before she can say anything, he's like, "Oh, my first wish! I wish I could go back in time." Because given the chance, eight out of ten people will actually wish they could go back in time. And she's like, "Oh, unfortunately, that's one wish that I can't grant you. It's, it's too dangerous. So the whole butterfly effect. You know, you change one thing here, and it will change." things in the future it changed the whole history of humankind so I can't do that but I can do anything else and then he was like oh I already wasted one wish I only had two and then she explains to him I'm, I'm fast forwarding a lot but she explains to him the whole three myth uh, the whole the whole three wishes thing is a myth and that only exists because after a while when people have been served by this genie and they can have whatever they want they kind of get bored they're like Man, life is no fun because I can get whatever I want. I just ask. So I don't want the genie anymore, and I wish the genie could go back in the bottle. And to make sure that people wouldn't regret that decision, then the genie will say, "I'll give you three wishes before I disappear. I'll go back in the bottle, and then I won't come out again until somebody else finds it." So that's where the three wishes comes from. The whole movie goes on. He wishes a bunch of stuff, but he's constantly trying to wish for things that would bring his family back. His daughter and his wife. So he wishes for a better car. He wishes for a better house. He actually wishes that he would have a Mona Lisa <laughs> painting right in his house, which is like so stupid. But anyway, don't we all do that? Don't we all wish for stupid things? Isn't it amazing that if you had a genie available to you, you would probably wish for so some stupid things? Oh, I wish I could have a better car, <laughs> you know. And um, most of the things that we need. They are hidden in plain sight. To be honest, I think we all should wish that we'd have less things, because, like, we we get distracted. I think, at least in the Western world, most of us, we we're so distracted that the best wish we could wish for is to have less things. Go back to the basics. Like in the movie, for example, he's wishing for so many things. And they're not making a difference because the people that actually love you, the people that actually care for you, they don't want more from you. They want more of you. And that is a secret for life. Parents, hear me out. Your kids, they don't need the next newest, brandest, fancy toy. They need you. And it's some people would say, you know, if I could, I would wish for more time. That's a mistake, because time is the only thing that you cannot accumulate. You can't accumulate time. Yesterday, gone. Tomorrow, not promised. The only thing you have is today. Actually, the only thing you have is now. So if you could wish for anything, I don't think we need more things, more material, more time, more nothing. What we need more of is awareness. We need to be more aware of right now. What's going on right now? What am I missing out right now? The reason why people have three wishes is because they don't realize what they are missing, and they pay attention on the things that they have missed, and we don't want to do that. So let's just assume you're, you're sitting right there. I don't know if you're watching this on the phone or on the screen or TV, but let's sit down and get your bottle. Let's just let's just pretend you have a bottle right there, and then you do this with me. Just rub it off. Just, just do it. Yeah, I know it sounds ridiculous, but you do it. It just rub off, okay? And then your genie comes out. Here's the question: If you had to choose right now, what would you wish for? What would you wish for? What would make your life perfect? I can bet you already have everything you need. And I'm not talking about the whole world. I'm not generalizing. But if you're watching this, on an electron on an electronic device you already have everything you need <laughs> now here is the the punchline if jesus had a youtube channel he would probably do this he would sit down in front of the camera and he would he would say this and maybe have some people around him and then it, it's called the sermon on the mountain i don't know why it's called the sermon on the mountain it wasn't on the mountain but that's a, a different conversation but he says in chapter six of that story told by matthew that we should not be worried About what we're gonna wear, what we're gonna eat, or what we're gonna drink. It's basically saying, don't don't worry about the things. You know, I got you. 
I, I know what you need. And then he says, he gives some examples. Like, look, look at the birds. Do you see the birds striving, hustling? You don't see the birds doing that. And, and God feeds them. There's a natural cycle. Now, I'm not saying you should just lay back and be lazy. That's not what I'm saying. But he gives a few other examples. You know, look at the flowers. Not even the richest guy that ever lived would dress there beautifully. And, and God takes care of them. Now, here's the question that Jesus would ask. Is in your life more important than the bird's life? Or than the flower that just rises and withers and goes away? I, I tend to agree with Jesus. It is. And then Jesus says, you know, what you got to do is this. You just seek for, that's Jesus' words, all right? That's not mine. He says, seek first the kingdom of God. And all of the other things, they'll come. I got your back. Because pagans, and the word pagans is just like people who don't believe. The people who don't have faith, they worry about these things. And, and I, I, I love this contrast. People of no faith, they worry. Like the John Mayer song, you know, they worry. And people of faith, they don't worry about a thing. You know that song? Every little thing is gonna be all right. I, I think that Bob Marley had an encounter with Jesus. I'm not gonna get into that. So people of no faith, they worry. People of faith, they trust. We can't go back in time. We can't time travel. At least not yet. But I think we can come to a realization that will change our lives. All you need is now. All you need is already there. Be aware, focus, and if you can take away anything from this little video today, is this, love the people around you now. Don't wait until it's too late. Don't wait for the next day. No, trust me, if you do that, you won't regret a day of your life. You just gotta trust me. Actually, don't trust me. <laughs> you can trust him, because that's his thing. That's his deal. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your understanding. That's a very wise saying. And in everything you do, you acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. Which translating is this. You just trust God. He knows what He's doing. We're kind of lost. So let's just follow what He says. And again, I'm not trying to convince you of anything, but I do think we all need to be more aware of our time. The time that we have is very limited and the people that are around us. And if we do that, as a matter of fact, let's do this. As you turn off the phone, you don't even need to like this or comment or anything. I, gotta, I don't really care. Um, there's a bunch of stuff here and I'm sure you go back, you come back for other videos, but right now you turn it off and I, I would love for you to either pick up your phone and call or send an audio message to someone you love and tell them, hey, I heard this crazy guy on the internet and he pushed me to do this. I love you, I value you, and you inspire me, whatever it is that you need to say, just do it, but do it now, all right? God bless. I'll see you on the next one.